Are you making money with food delivery? Is most folks in the gig economy are lazy, entitled, and they want something for free. So you might as well put your big boy pants on. Sir, yes, sir, sir. Do it! We got Linda's order right so much, guys. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your boy, The Dashing Trader. On this channel, we help you maximize with gig apps in the gig economy. DoorDash, Uber, Walmart Spark, Instacart, Amazon, Shipped, Roadie, all of them. We focus on the food delivery and the grocery delivery right now. Are you making money with food delivery? And are you making money with grocery delivery? These are the questions I think we need to be asking ourselves right now. And if the answer is no, what can you do to begin to turn the leaf and start being profitable again? I've been out for two hours today. The time is 2.14. I've been running DoorDash and Uber, the two apps I know hit the hardest on every weekend in my market. Sitting at $34 on DoorDash and $33 on Uber. I'm actually waiting on an $8 McDonald's order right now. And I thought this was the perfect time to go ahead and make a little video because this is what I want to talk about today. I got a couple ride-alongs already ready and produced, sitting in the laptop, ready to go. But sometimes here in the gig economy, we got to pivot and, you know, go a little bit away from the scheduled digest and talk about some different things. I'm gonna throw up a couple of screenshots, split screens up right now. Let me know, would you take some of the offers that you're seeing right now? The reason I ask that is because a lot of times we see really bad offers, but then there's sometimes we see some offers that are like borderline. Can we begin to take some of those borderline offers so that we can begin to incrementally increase our profitability when using these apps? Now, I know DoorDash may be king in a lot of markets. And I know also you may be required to be top dash or to any make any amount of money on these apps. But I'm going to tell you what I always tell you in every single video. Expand your horizons. Try out some grocery delivery. Sure. It doesn't matter if it's DoorDash, Eats, Walmart, or Instacart. If you are doing grocery delivery in 2023, you're probably making more money than you did last year. More than likely you are. A lot of us don't have access to the large order program just yet. You can begin to make large order money, higher paying money by trying these shopping orders, guys. I showed you how to do them on Walmart Spark. I've shown you them on DoorDash. You have to take the initiative and begin to do them so that your independent algorithm when it comes to DoorDash or Uber or Walmart, it can begin to say, hey, I'm being trained because my driver is doing these shopping orders. Now I'm going to send them a couple more, maybe some with some higher dollar amounts. This is my advice to you guys in the gig economy so that you can begin to make more money. Things are always changing and you got to be ready to try out some new things. Uber, not Uber, Instacart is actually getting ready to IPO on the stock market because they are now at a point where they feel like it's a good time to put that stock on the NASDAQ. Why? Because they're actually making profit. And if they make a profit, everybody else who in the same industry as them and, and facilitate the same type of orders as them, they're going to be trying to figure out, hey, how can we get a piece of that pot? This can benefit you as a driver because that means there's going to be more shop and deliver opportunities available to you so you can do less food delivery and make that money. I'm going to pick up this McDonald's real quick. This is not no shot to be thrown at nobody, but I do get it. Sometimes complaining is just easier than putting in some actual work. See, here's the thing. A lot of us here in the gig economy, we so used to things coming to us so easy. And I'll, I'll put myself in that same category too, because when I used to have a large order program and, you know, I, I, I could guarantee go out and get one of those per day and it was going to be anywhere from 20 to a hundred dollar tip. I miss those days and it's easy to sit back and complain about it. And oh, woe is me. The sky is falling. But what's harder to do is go out, try a different delivery platform, a different catering platform. You know, maybe you're getting some large orders through grocery delivery, 
that's harder. What's easier and what I see is a trend in the gig economy is most folks in the gig economy are lazy, entitled, and they want something for free or with little to no effort. And that's just not the way you're going to get it. So you might as well put your big boy pants on, you know what I'm saying? Go out there and do some real work. Go back to a W-2 if you have to, but if you're going to be in the gig economy, you got to be able to understand that it's ever-changing. You got to be willing to adapt, and you got to make the most of the opportunities in front of you guys, because that's the only way you're going to make it if you make it all your money from the gig economy. Now, if you using the gig economy as a platform into your next endeavor, or you using it to learn some skills, whether it be customer service or customer relations or marketing or, you know, logistical things, you can learn a lot from the gig economy. But what you don't want to do is fall into the trap of complaining, being entitled. It's nothing wrong with voicing your opinion, but complaining without no action is just that complaining without no action. So look, let's put our big boy pants on. Let's roll our sleeves up. Let's take the pacifier out of the mouth. Right. And let's get to work, guys. And that's what I got for you today. That's my message for you guys today. I know this is going to be a little short video, but hopefully it get through to the person that it needs to get through to because I just I feel like we got to do better. We got to be men out here. I know some of us are uh, women. That's OK, too. We got to be adults out here and be responsible for our finances and be responsible for us making money. Taking a no tip order consistently is a gamble. We all know that. But. A calculated risk is different from a gamble. Now, if you made it this far in the video, you the real MVP. As you can see here, I'm putting the final touches on this video. Now, I need you to do me a favor. Look, I know I say this in every video, but leave me a like, leave me a subscribe, guys. It really goes a long way. We on our way to 10,000 subscribers on this channel. You can see all the hard work we put in, all the, you know, different clips we had to add together and different moving parts and everything. If you want to show your appreciation for all the work that I put in editing these videos and putting out consistent content on this channel, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and also check out one of these next videos that YouTube recommend because it really goes a long way when you binge that FBA content. As always, I'll catch you in the next one.